All right. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Rock the Barrel 2 virtual tasting. I'm your moderator, Seth, and we are here with Tommy Brunette, the CEO of Iron Smoke, Drew Westcott, Master Distiller, and the one and only Mr. John Petrucci. Welcome, guys. So good to have you all here. Yeah. And talk about yeah. the latest and greatest. That's right. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us. Nice to see you. Hope you guys are having a nice uh, Friday evening. I like the one guy's background. It's my album cover. That's cool. Yeah, nice one. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. You know, I I'm, couldn't be more excited about this collaboration and, of course, uh, the bourbon itself and working with Tommy and Drew. Uh, but I want to take a second just so you guys know who Seth is, who started this, uh, who just introduced us here. So Seth is basically, he's the man who made this happen. He is the broker behind this. Um, we first met in an Iron Maiden concert, right, Seth? Or was it before then? Yeah, no, it was at, um, yeah. I don't remember what tour it was. It was yeah, one of them. Yeah, and so uh, with his involvement with Maiden and Trooper Beer, uh, we actually connected um, with Dream Theater. I don't know if you guys, any of you ever tasted the Barcel Warrior beer that we did, um, but that was a, a connection that Seth made. And then knowing how much into bourbon I am and kind of, you know, finding out about Tommy and his background in music and iron smoke and the whole thing, he thought it would be a great connection. So as soon as I started talking to Tommy, uh, if we proved Seth to be right, so we can all thank Seth for this great partnership. So thank you very much. And he's going to moderate and uh, take your questions and filter them to us. So thanks yeah, for doing so that. everyone, while we're, um, talking about this delicious juice. Um, definitely put down some questions in the chat. Um, we'll pick out some of the good ones so everyone here can answer them. And um, yeah, it's great to, we got a nice big group here today. Absolutely. So I, I guess, um, I mean, I'll, I'll just start. So guys, maybe you can um, you know, talk about how the Rock the Barrel 2 came about. I mean, we, uh, we had the first go around, which was amazing. Um, do you guys want to just kind of talk about how round two came to be and what was the idea behind it? Absolutely. You want to go for it, Tommy? Uh, it's more, I think it's, you it should come from you because it's such a special <laughs> day and the, that story whole, the whole story behind it. But yeah, yeah. Well, well, I mean, the, the initial rock the barrel run, the 120 proof, um, it, it was so, so good. You got master distiller drew here, the, the scientist, the the chef um the alchemist <laughs> all that wrapped up into one uh the artisan and it it came out so great and uh as some of you may know it, it was very limited and it just i mean it was like what was it a day it sold out or two days tommy what was it yeah it was in 48 hours so the yeah thing, the whole thing was gone yeah, the whole thing was gone. So we talked about, you know, the idea of, of doing a second run. Um, and of course, we we loved it so much and the bourbon came out so great. But we wanted to do something just to make it slightly different because we knew, you know, th this bourbon is a blend of different barrels. So we knew in some ways it wouldn't be exact. And maybe, Drew, you can get into later how you sort of match the formula. But one of the things we thought we we do is sort of drop the proof a little bit. Um, I love, you know, cask strength bourbons and the 120 proof was really awesome to me. Uh, but at the same time, bourbons that are in that kind of mid 90s spot are really, really good to me. And we were trying to think of a number and we chose 93 proof uh, because it means something to me in that it's the year that my wife and I, so that would be Raina, and I got married in 1993. So we thought 93 is a good number. It's very meaningful to Raina and I. And so that's why we picked 93. So uh, Drew, I, 
you know, maybe you could explain how you actually nail the exact proof. I, I'm, I'm sort of confused by that in the process. To, to nail the proof or nail the flavor, John? Well, actually both. Both, well, if you don't both. mind. So, well, the, the flavor is tricky. I mean, I mean the, the weird part is about it. I mean, you can mix something that tastes phenomenal and something else that tastes phenomenal. You put them together and it tastes horrible. So right. it's, it's kind of over the years, I've just kind of found a knack for just mixing different profiles out of different barrels to, to meet whatever you guys are looking for whatever was looking for but as far as the proof i mean this no, i think i'm breaking up here just yeah. a little no I, I didn't hear what you said about the proof drew Oh, so the proof basically all it is it's just a hydrometer, John. It's a, a float that you drop into a tube, and then you add amount of water to the whiskey to make it to the correct proof. So, gotcha. Okay, cool, awesome. So, I guess at home, if you uh, in 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 effect, if you have if you want to cut the bourbon's proof, you can do the same with water. Yep. Just yeah, just you wouldn't have the meter. All right, cool. What else, what else, Tommy? About uh, rock the barrel two. I'm just, I think I'm, it's interesting. Well, I think it's interesting how you pick the proof and we could nail it, like you just said, with the hydrometer. Um, yeah. I love the flavor. Um, it, it, the Iron Smoke, for you guys that don't really know much about us, we're a New York State Farm distillery. Um, came up with in the backyard. We're just basically the concept is putting two great American pastimes together, great American barbecue and great American bourbon. And John... And I hold a love for that as well as music. We've got the smokers in the backyard. I got three Weber's, two smokers and other stuff. But we we smoke some of the grains as part of the process. So you get a really light hint of applewood smoke. Like you can over, over smoke a, a rib too, or, your, or whenever you're smoking meats. Um, so we put those two together. I met Drew on the path um, early on and he was part of the whole first right out of the gate iron smoke story and um we've been running ever since we're you know we call it like we're a bunch of scoundrels trying to make the best bourbons we can and not cutting corners and we're one of the most sought after small batch bourbons in the world right now which is amazing from the backyard to today and um i'm just blessed with those kind of people around me and then when john approached us after he tasted our cask strength which is 120 proof we call it casket strength because of yeah scully the most interesting dead guy <laughs> i love we it do. we got shirts and and we got these rock the barrel shirts too i think you can get them online still but it's it's always been just the high road the long road and we don't, we don't cut corners and we try to make the best bourbons we can and um it's it's been a wild ride and then all of a sudden you're you know riding the river and john comes on and <laughs> john, john petrucci um kicked us into the world of music pretty heavily all of a sudden we were on in guitar world magazine and stuff and i've got a background in music too i've played my whole life but it's just been that's it that's it in a nutshell that's basically who we are and you know Forbes magazine top 10 just, uh bourbons beyond kentucky we've been getting good accolades but basically you got to just make it taste taste as good as possible you know yeah like, every means you have and everything that drew put together um I think it's great too. You guys are, I mean, I, I live in New York. I was born and raised in New York. You guys are up in Fairport, New York. And I don't know if everybody knows this, but it's maybe you could explain this too, but everything that you use, all your grains, everything, they're from local New York farmers, even the, the, uh, the barrels, right. The, that wood is that everything's made in New York, right? Yep. Yeah. You yeah. Kind of talk. Yeah. The, wood, the barrels are all made right in Remsen up in the Adirondacks, but the wood comes out of Minnesota. Gotcha. Some of the best oak, that's where it comes from, is Minnesota. You can't grow oak for making whiskey barrels in New York, unfortunately. It just gotcha. the grain grows way too. And it's just this way our media is. So. Yeah. But the barrels are, are made in New York. Yes. Yep. 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 Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and I, I went up there. If you guys ever get a chance, I don't know where everybody lives that's joining us today. Uh, if you're all around the country, but if you're ever in that part of New York, it's upstate, um, beautiful part of New York, and uh, the the distillery and and the the 
establishment you guys have is just so impressive and so cool. You have this unbelievable bar and tasting room and a live uh, venue where you guys do events and stuff like that. I mean, it's an experience. I was truly blown away by all of the detail and care that you guys put into your place. Um, you can certainly see it online virtually if you go to um, the Iron Smoke site. But if you ever get a chance and you're in New York and looking for something fun to do, it's really an impressive place. It's pretty amazing. It's huge. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah we have 15,000 square feet and we, yeah, you know, we, Drew uses all, the way he put the things together is, you know, Drew insisted that we have a hammer mill room on site because grains, you want fresh grains, crushed grains. I learned a lot of this from watching him, but the grain is kind of like the difference between drinking French press coffee or an instant cup of coffee. You want the fresh gotcha. grains, all these little steps using Vendome Kentucky stills and the triple char on the 30 gallon barrels that we use. We get a sophistication in three years of a six year old. Um, all these steps along the way really are impressive. And we, we have a, a, a concert room too in our tasting room. So we've got like, you know, it's built by musicians. So the, the room's pretty cool. We do everything from our own burlesque shows we produce to rock concerts. Uh, there's a Billy Joel tribute band speaking. Oh, that's awesome. Tonight, yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah, and, and that was one of the things, like with me, you know, it, it obviously I have um, partnerships in the music industry. I mean, you guys all know that with my guitars with Ernie Ball, Music Man and Boogie and DeMarzio and, and everything else. But with me getting involved outside of music and, and uh, partnering um, outside of music, to me, it's all about the connection and what we have in common and how we do things. And as soon as Tommy and I started talking, there was all this kind of background that we had with both guitar players. He's been in the music industry big time. Uh, you have a lot of history there, Tommy. I don't know if you want to talk about it. You got a guitar signed by Johnny Cash behind you. Yeah, my, I mean, it just. <laughs> my son's name's Cash. That's so much we love him. Cash and Jagger. My wife's way cooler than I am. And it's our anniversary today. Yeah, so, happy anniversary. Happy yeah, anniversary. So it's all tied in public. But um, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty amazing. Um yeah. So that that connection to me was like you know, that and then of course tasting the bourbon and just being blown away by it. Um and by the way, speaking of anniversaries and wives, uh the name Rock the Barrel, it did came uh did come from Raina. She we were trying to think of a name one night, and uh I probably told it you guys this before but there's there's a term i guess you guys use in your process called clock the barrel right where you turn the barrel or whatever and is that right drew something like that there's a lot of guys that do and you know we've done it on different trials and stuff like that but yeah so yeah. it's the practice to choose for sure yeah so she thought rock the barrel and i was like it took me a split second to say absolutely that's the name so that's where it came from of course, this one's Rock the Barrel, too. Um, a lot of people involved as well. Uh, the artist, the, to the gentleman there, has my album cover in the background. Um, yes. So the artist who did that, his name is Sean Mosher Smith. Um, he did uh, the artwork for the label that you see. So he's been a great partner as well. Um, he also did the latest liquid tension experiment record. He's he's an awesome, awesome artist. So, so uh, yeah. Real, so we're taking um everyone. You know, feel free to please ask any questions you want in the chat. Um, I'll be moderating. So, John, can you talk a little bit um about the sort of flavor and the taste profile that you were really looking to nail with this. Um, yeah, absolutely. And it, it actually might be a good time for all of us to get our glasses ready. And, and this is a virtual tasting. You guys have your glasses mind. ready. I'm actually behind. So I, I have a fresh bottle here. Me too. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, you too. We're gonna crack it open. There you go. <laughs> By the way, everybody joining us, thank you so much for purchasing this and being a part of this. It's so cool. And, uh, we all really appreciate it. All right, so here it is. I don't know what kind of glasses you guys use, and I have the uh, the Glencairn glass. What do you guys have? Some of you have rocks glasses. I'm using right? it, unfortunately, guys. But well, you have a somebody down there poured a poured a big, uh, really big glass. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you guys think I should use? The rocks or the other one? 
Use the rocks. Come on. Use the rocks. Really? Yeah. Wow. Depends where. Yeah, what you right? On that one. <laughs> what? I don't know. I, I I think Drew and Tommy might uh might challenge you on that one. Yeah. What What do I know? Leave it to, leave it <laughs> to the experts. So I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> it's best right out of the bottle. <laughs> yeah, right out of the bottle. Here. I'll do a little bit of both. We'll do, we'll do some rocks. Yeah, it is. It's up to your own t personal taste too, John. right, John? Just yeah, like, yeah. You open it up a little bit with an ice cube, or you want to keep it neat. Yeah. Without. Exactly. I mean, for me, I don't know what you guys think. For me, I'm um, I'm into it neat. You know, obviously, there's there's tons of drinks and things you could make using bourbon, but I like it neat. I don't add any water. I don't add any ice cubes or anything like that. Um, and you could tell right away with the with the the smell. I mean. To answer your question there, uh, Seth, I mean, I was, I like bourbons that have kind of a thick sort of feel to it. They, they have that, that really rich color, um, that butterscotchy, caramel, vanilla vibe to it, uh, and, and that are very, very smooth. You know, I don't, the thing I love about Iron Smoke is that have that it does have that slight smoke, which adds depth and it just makes it more interesting. Um, but I don't really tend to like bourbons that are light and weak, and uh, I don't know, I can't explain it too menthol-y or something like that. Um, so that's what I was looking for, and that's what Drew nailed. So why don't we all uh, take a taste of this right now? Whiskey up! Cheers, everybody! Whiskey up! Yeah. And whiskey down. Mm. So good. Beautiful. So good. Beautiful. Good. Beautiful. Real good. <laughs> it's just it, it it has it has exactly that I you know, I mean when uh, I first went up to uh to Iron Smoke for the initial to come up with the initial initial formula um i'm not sure if i posted it or not you guys laid out bottles they had every they had a dozen or more bottles from different barrels laid out and then glenn karen glasses like this all filled with a little bit and uh note cards and we tasted all of them took notes and decided which ones to blend of course they told me you know you could you can spit out as you taste but uh, I thought that wasn't the way to do it. So oh, you, you were like a <laughs> champ. I was like, man, this guy's, you had it's on the video on YouTube. On yeah. uh, our, it's got that picture, and I'm giving him credit, man, because not many people would do that. Not, <laughs> that I've seen besides. Well, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's just let's just say Raina had to drive me back okay. um, from the tasting, but you know, because I wanted to part part yeah, of the I'll experience. I think is is. Yeah, go ahead. Well, funny story, man. The first whiskey uh, conference I ever went to, I was 24 years old when I worked at Montezuma. And uh, we went to this one. It was in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And um, they set up a whole table. So one table had probably maybe 150 bottles of gin on it. The next table probably had 150 bottles of vodka. And next table had 150 bottles of bourbon or whiskey and so on and so forth. Everything, you know, tequila, whatever, you know, brandy, such like that. And everybody's got these spit buckets and they're walking around spitting in them. I'm 24 years old. I'm like, what the fuck? Why is everybody spitting in a bucket? I said, that's ridiculous. So I'm slamming them down, you know, and about 45 minutes go up by and I don't remember anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> There's two Drews, by the way. There's the engineer, like, <laughs> so I learned a lot. Chemist, brilliant, best, probably one of the best master distillers around the world right now. And then there's Drew, Mr. F at all. <laughs> right, <laughs> gotcha. That, that's the two guys you gotta meet. If you meet both of them, you're really lucky. <laughs> right. Awesome. That's actually that's actually a good segue. So, Drew, question for you: um, how how did you become a master distiller, and what you know, what sort of stars align to make you fall into All that? Right, so, I was, so basically, I was. Um, I graduated high school. wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. I went to uh, Tompkins Cortland Community College in, uh, in um, up by Cortland, and uh, I did one semester there in criminal justice, trying to figure out what I was going to do. Realized you know college wasn't for me. Didn't want to do that. 
moved back home. My parents was working for my father a little bit, took a part-time job at this uh, winery that was hiring for an assistant distiller. And well, actually, excuse me, they were hiring for a groundskeeper, basically doing uh, weed eating, you know, basically taking care of the uh, landscaping, stuff like that. I worked my ass off. And then in the winter, they were hiring for an assistant distiller. And I said, you know, I'd really like that job. And they said, all right, it's yours if you want it. They hired me through the winter. And I just, like I say, man, I just kept working my ass off and, you know, that ended up meeting Tommy. And, you know, I don't know, the rest is history. We just kind of. Amazing. I, I got lucky, but I also worked hard for it. Yeah. That's incredible. It's wild because the Let's river took us. Says. The river took us all together, and it's like we never fight the river, and we just keep going. And it's been an amazing experience. And even with John, remember I told you about the cassette I had of Majesty? Yes, yes, wow. You grew that I got from somebody that knew you from high school or something. Someone that was going to school in Brockport. That is something insane. Like, that is insane. You're, that, that's a very rare thing to have a Majesty cassette <laughs> Eddie, i see thumbs up some of you guys have that <laughs> that's crazy i i see you guys are like holding up some signs i can't really read it and they're backwards but we should yeah it's sort of blurred out but why don't we do this why don't we start taking some questions um i don't know if you guys are typing in or how to do it sure yeah I'm, and, and, uh, I, I i got it rolling now so uh I this also seth i'm sorry but sure. just just by show of glass uh is everybody enjoying this tonight? Nice. Beautiful. I think we're all on the same page, everybody. Cool. Great, great, great way to end the week. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We got questions rolling in. So um, I guess this next one is for Tommy and Drew. This is from Richard Roberts. Uh, Richard asks, how is the aging process determined? That's true. And in, in what sense, Roger? I'm not sure the question i mean we let um, it go i mean I'm, I'm guessing like how um how do you determine when the barrels are ready to go or how long to age the bourbon on age bourbon so okay so uh 30 gallon barrels so the ones that we're using now are about 60 months air dried oak or whatever the ones that we were using before were probably 35 to 40 months or whatever we could only age that for probably two, two and a half years tops. Well, with the ones that we're getting there, 60 months air dried, we can get about three years out of them before it starts leaching chemicals out of the leaves. Oh, we lost. We, we lost in mid explanation. Yeah, but we, I'll just kind of jump in. It's a lot to do with true testing all the barrels that. Our aging and he knows like after that's about the math you can do on a 30 really i lost him yeah we we got i don't know if you can hear us drew we got some of that but you're cutting out tommy was Sorry. sort of filling in where did we leave off i missed out it was about we left off on math. We left off on growl. <laughs> 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 Somewhere between that and yet. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, well, I'll, I'll move on to some. We, we got tons of questions flying in. Um, this one is from Adrian Schaller. Adrian asks, uh, John, how long have you been into bourbons? Maybe you want to talk about how you entered the bourbon world yeah sure um it, it's it's been quite a few years now um i it it all started I, I was on tour with dream theater and i i have to be careful how i tell this story it's a great story so, yeah well I'll, I'll i'll give the uh the edited sort of version <laughs> so i don't offend anybody um let's just say i had a very it was just a very bizarre kind of interaction at a meet and greet that that kind of freaked me out and and uh i was you know after afterwards like oh my god i'm not sure what to do with this information and the situ this situation that happened at this meet and greet it it just it was just weird it was just kind of a bizarre situation um, and our, our production assistant at the time said, you know what, you got to get rid of the mojo. I, I felt like some sort of spell was put on me or something. Um, and so he's like, the only way is to drink bourbon. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> he brought in all these bourbons that the crew had, lined them up, you know, and I, I drank and, and I realized, wow, I, I really like this. And that sort that started it. And that, that was several, several years ago. And I started to get really into it and uh, never thought in a million, a million years that I would be uh, partnering with uh, a distillery so incredible um as iron smoke so here we are but yeah awesome. it was it it was to uh it was to get rid of the the demons that <laughs> so, to stop so, the hex from hexing you there was some sort of weird situation that's, that's as far as i can take it <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll 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 move on um well, yeah so uh drew this is a question for you from david anderson um David asks, can you talk a bit about the mash bill? I know it's four grain and weeded, but how is that all chosen for this particular offering? Yeah, no problem, man. So it's a uh, 65% corn. Uh, we got 30% we, wheat. Um, oh, grain. Did you lose me again? Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, sorry, Drew. We got an issue with your connection. How's that? I can hear you. Okay. Better. So it's 65% corn, 30% wheat, 3% no, barley, and 2% rye. Sorry, we're losing you, but maybe you're doing it on purpose so because it's, pr it's proprietary. You don't want people to know <laughs> the action. <laughs> it's, it's something percent this and something percent that, but co basically corn, corn, wheat, something, and barley. What was the third one? The, what right. was the third rye right there right. you go gotcha perfect awesome by the way um, i'm gonna i'm gonna switch to the glen karen glass for the second pour um actually tommy you turned me on to these yeah. um like when we did the tasting just about you know getting it filled to around there yep and then also sort of as you drink it sniffing in at the same time right that's part of the yeah, if you, if you bring it in through your nose and your mouth at the same time, so you get right. the whole experience, and then you just let the ride go, and it's really cool. Like you said, yeah. like the smoke comes out on the last back end of everything, but you get those it, vanilla and butterscotch notes up front, yes, in the middle. The smoke is really, really subtle, but and, and one of the things that I that I love, uh, you guys can see this, you have it. Don't you love the color? Look it's at the color great. of that. It's beautiful. That would make a great guitar color. What do you think? <laughs> dude right bourbon. your next majesty right there that should be a bourbon majesty an iron smoke mat i just love that color it's just so beautiful you should have a guitar filled with bourbon filled with bourbon <laughs> <laughs> with a little little hole you know, like a camelback with a little straw you could drink during the there drink. you go you can have a little like bladder in it you can fill it with <laughs> bourbon and but anyway so so uh we'll do it again whiskey up guys cheers Cheers. Kampai, Nostrovia, everything Cheers. else. Prost. Um, this is actually a great question. So um, in addition to bourbons, John, you are a big barbecue guy as well, which yeah. I think a lot of people know. So Dom asks, with all the talk of barbecue pairing, what is your favorite food pairing with Rock the Barrel or another type of bourbon? Right. Um, well, I, you know, I got in, this is another story. Um, you guys might know this, you might not know it, but Sterling Ball, uh, of, of course, Ernie Ball Music Man, um, is a, a, an award-winning competitive barbecue pit master. And uh, he is also known as Big Papa. And he has a company called Big Papa's Smokers. And, and what he did at the time, several years ago, is he kind of, came up with uh, a, a company that sold American made smokers in one spot, but that, that grew into everything from smokers to uh, rubs and sauces and meat and everything else. So anyway, one day a, a smoker shows up my, at my house and uh, he's, he got one for his endorsees. So, you know, me and Steve Morris and Albert Lee and Steve Lukather, we all got smokers. And there's this two thousand dollars smoker sitting at my house. I'm like, okay, I better learn how to use this. I don't want to insult Sterling, 
uh, little did I know it'd become like a great pastime and a great passion. So it was a pellet smoker. And uh, I think I have, let's see, in my yard, there's, there's three different ones. Uh, I'm really into the charcoal one lately. Uh, just cooking with charcoal and smoking that way is just a whole different flavor thing. Um, but yeah, totally. but I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a sucker, you know, ribs and bourbon is, is beautiful, you know, because you have that sort of sweet smoky thing already. Uh, but I'm a sucker for steak, you know, just an amazing steak and, and a great, great bourbon with it, I think goes really well. Um, this is a really, this is a great question. And actually this Tommy and Drew, this is for you too, as well. Spencer Barnes asks, if you could share Rock the Barrel with three famous people, either dead or alive, who would it be? Oh, man. I got mine. All right, oh, okay. Tommy, go, ahead. go ahead, Tommy. Tom Waits, Johnny Cash, and Keith Richards. Nice. Wow. No hesitation. Perfect. Wow. Perfect. Whew. That's I, got my, I got mine. All right. Richard. Tommy Burnett, Drew Westcott, and Seth Leibowitz. Oh, <laughs> you beat me. Oh, you mother <laughs> Hey, what's the best? What's what's your what's the best whiskey or bourbon ever? Besides this one, the ones oh, we share that... with our friends. So cheers, everybody. You're, yeah. You're our friends, and thanks for your support. Um, Absolutely. I'd love to know that. I mean, I don't know who, if you're asking everybody out there. I'd love to know. Um, we actually, someone, hold on. Someone did mention, I'm going back into the chat, because um, someone did ask what other kinds of bourbons. Um, Paul mentioned i'm a big old forester 1920 fan and okay. also any e.h taylor nice good one nice i'll tell you what there was one uh tour that dream theater did and there the uh tour rehearsals were in kentucky and we were in in a venue that we were playing it was a theater and uh you know we took a break for lunch or whatever i walk outside say oh i should pick up some bourbon i'm in kentucky i literally right next to the venue there's this this liquor store i've never seen so many bourbons in my life i mean i it was two stories of bourbon and i i never heard of any of them so you know just the i guess the variation out there um is it's just incredible you know and and I don't know. It's I don't know if you guys have ever been to Kentucky and tried that, but um, I Tommy, I uh, what's that? Tommy, tell them the story about what I can't remember the name of the bar we were in where that guy asked me to sign the bottle. Yeah, it was like well, one thing about Kentucky is um, when you say you're a master distiller, yeah, we'll stop and go. Nice. The guy, they treat right? you like. <laughs> That doesn't happen a lot up in New York. That yeah, you know, like, but in Kentucky and Louisville, when yeah. you see a master distiller, the room stops. Nice. So there was this bar that is the second largest collection of uh, bourbons in the Western Hemisphere or the world or something, and they found yeah. out the Drew was there, and they stopped and they got him to sign the thing and bring him up on this ladder and um, oh it was wow, really cool to be known for someone from New York State being accepted for somebody in Kentucky. That's a amazing thing. That that is an amazing thing. That yeah. that's that's like Dream Theater being recognized in the UK for playing Prague. That's a sim that's a pretty <laughs> similar <laughs> all, all the Prague bands are from the UK and we come along from America and finally get accepted. It's a cool thing to be respected yeah. probably by people that are your people that you maybe really loved and respected yeah yeah that's an amazing story that's really cool drew that that's uh, great you're right you know, I, I, I was definitely yeah uh, highlight of my I, own. I noticed i noticed this for sure yeah it's amazing i i noticed too um traveling a lot that that i don't know if you guys out there notice this but bourbon has become a lot more you know, popular and, and regular in a lot of bars and hotels and things like that. I mean, 
the last tour we were on, I mean, I, I was in Italy and I was at a hotel and they had a bar and, you know, that all the American bourbons there. And then, then it went to some other restaurant and the bar and they had all these, you know, it's, it's, I, I think there's been this great renaissance um, for bourbon. Tommy, I, I don't know, maybe you know sort of the timing of that, but yeah, I noticed that big time. When we came up with this, it was 2011 and vodka, flavored vodkas were in. Like, yes. you know, tobacco flavored, cotton candy, lemon, le like whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the whiskey aisle was like this. The bourbon aisle right. was like not big. And right. people just were like Jack or Jim, you know, whatever. Yeah. And yep. then Pappy, where you could buy for $40 all day long on a shelf. And then, so we didn't get into it to follow a trend. We got into it because we liked the idea of what the concept was for the putting the, the two Great American Passums together. And we never followed trends. Um, but now it's, we. I just did an interview with somebody that was talking about the whiskey collections because now we're bourbon. There's these great bourbon clubs that are really, really geeking out. Wow. And, you know, and- um, Amazing. We, yeah, and it's the- was it FOMO, the fear of missing out? So the rare, right? Ones, everybody's like, yes, you know, like <laughs> the rarer it is, and we're all kids with bigger toys, you know, like we, grew yeah. Up, so we want things that are a little more special. So that's why we're coming out with. We talked about the rye. Um, that's only that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, Sean Master Smith worked on this with me. This no morning. way! Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Our our friendly neighborhood artist. That's great. Yeah, we met through you, you know, and and I love fantastic. Him. He's talented. Well, guys, before you get too far there, though, so the thing is, is when I got started into this, it would have been sixteen years, fifteen years ago. Okay. And before I met Tom, it was five years before that, and there was only thirteen registered distilled spirits plants in the state of New York. Now we have wow. one hundred ninety. That's wow. how fast this industry has grown. You know. Wow. So I went from thirty to one hundred ninety. So. That's amazing. That's amazing. And also, correct me if I'm wrong, but I kind of, I don't remember bourbons really being produced outside of Kentucky for like the longest time, right? And then all of a sudden, it seems so like the, 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 TTB, the TTB changed a couple of rules. So basically, okay. you can age it for a uh, fifty-one or fifty-three gallon barrel for a um, minimum of seven years, and they changed it so basically you could, you know, small craft distilleries could age it quicker. So, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, no, but it's 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 been great. What what a great renaissance, and you know, I mean, what you guys are doing is just top of the game. You know, yeah. That's just, actually that's a sorry that's a good segue into another question. Um, yeah. You know, we were talking about Tennessee and and Kentucky, how you know they have that great great limestone water that they use. Um, so Spencer asked, what kind of water, uh, Tommy and Drew, do you guys use? At Iron Smoke uh, to make your bourbon. And everybody gets caught up on the water discussion. Everybody I know, always, I, I know. And I, I, I mean, I, it might impact their individual flavor profile, but at the end of the day, I think that as long as you're using good, clean water, you're good to go. You know, like the limestone creeks that they uh, preach down in uh, Tennessee and Kentucky. I don't know, man. I think it just comes off the, the creek at a different pH. We can change the pH, no problem. And I, I don't think it makes a difference, you know. That's my two cents. I mean, you ask another guy, it might be different. So yeah, that's that's interesting. That's good to know, though. That's because you know it's kind of like they they have these discussions with uh, with pizza and bagels outside of New York, right? It's the water, right. and you know yeah. you can't have you can't get a good pizza in Florida, or they you know they have to like right. import you, the water. Yeah, gotta go deep dish, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. So that's interesting. It's interesting that you could sort of control that aspect of it and not have it um influence the bourbon in, in a negative way you know obviously it doesn't right. you know i've tasted many many bourbons from kentucky and this beats you know to me it beats all of them but that's just me um what are the questions what, we got different different folks from different folks man yeah exactly yeah. um yeah so a lot a lot of people are already asking for when's going to be the next rock the barrel etc cetera, etc cetera. um but this one from bill jones bill asks have you thought of an orange flavor bourbon or are there any types of flavor profiles that you know john maybe you want to look at for round three or tommy yeah and Jimmy, any ones that you're maybe thinking of too there i mean there are for me personally i it's a weird thing because you know, we started this whole thing with the cask strength and that's just pure. I mean, that's like, 
you know, serious, serious bourbon drinkers, bourbon. Um, and it all started that way. Now, now we lowered the proof. It's beautiful. You know, when you start getting into flavors, um, it, it's a whole different, it, it's appealing to, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Tommy, it's like a whole different kind of audience or something like that, the flavored bourbons. Um, I, having said that, I've had this sort of longing for a, a butter flavored bourbon. You know, I know they, you mentioned that when we first started I, doing this. I remember. Yeah. I mean, Harry Potter has butter beer <laughs> and you got butter scotch, uh, but I've never done, I've never heard of a butter bourbon. So I don't know. So it's something that might, you know, we might be able to do in the future. It wouldn't be vegan though. We'd have some issues. <laughs> yeah. We have a flavored category, the Rosie's line that we started off with um, the apple pie. Yes. It's That's so good. Apple. Drew was making us illegally in high school. We just made it legal and made it brand new. <laughs> And um, that's he's that's all he wants to do his whole life is do what he's doing now. I think right? yeah, that and boat, but you know whiskey and boat. But um, and then this is a, a newer one we came out with. It's the the um chocolate peanut butter pie bourbon cream. That's oh my god, I haven't tried that. One. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's like I can't put it down. Like I told him get it out of my office when he <laughs> when he made it. Um, and and then there's the maple bacon, and there's yeah. no. There's no bacon in there. It's just a strain of yeast that drew sound. Right. Yeah, so it's so we got the Rosie's line. That's a different kind of feeling. So then we combine the two, but you got the purest. Like oh, wait, I just want bourbon, right? And and, and the, uh, the the Rosie's line was because we didn't want to get into making gins and vodkas like a lot of smaller distilleries do to keep the lights on. We wanted yeah. pure bourbon and whiskey that we're making. I think also that some of the flavored uh, bourbons could make some interesting cocktails too, right? Because you can kind of mix those with certain things oh, yeah. and you have all these. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. Maple bacon, old fashions with our stuff. And there you go. One of my favorites is the, the, the uh, straight bourbon with the apple pie mixed together, two parts smoke, one part bur the um, oh, uh, call it the peacemaker. Oh, nice. Very cool. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. Actually, you guys on your if if you uh, if any of you follow Iron Smoke on uh, their socials, sometimes on Instagram they'll post some cool uh, bourbon recipes. I had a, a very interesting uh, drink at a restaurant, which was it's it started out as a Manhattan, but the ice cube some, somehow it had liquor in it, and when it as it melted, it turned into an old fashioned. So it was like a ma it was cool. like a Manhattan. It was like the weirdest thing I've ever had before. It was so really they probably cool. Probably had it, the the ice cube infused with the extra ingredient, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It was really, really, really interesting. Very cool. Where was that? It was it. That was at Disney. Oh. That was at Disney. <laughs> I remember you told me you went there. That that the, the Star Yeah, Wars. that was in Florida. Yeah. That's cool. It was actually at the Four Seasons in uh, oh, okay. in Orlando. Yeah. Awesome. Um, what are the questions that we have? Here, so um, oh, this is a very cool question. Someone wanted to know uh, how um, how we came up with the artwork for Rock the Barrel and what was sort of the um, influences or the the idea behind creating that um, fantastic label. Yeah, well, I mean, we mentioned this in the beginning. Uh, for those of you who, who missed it, um, we partnered with an artist named Sean Mo Mosher, Mosher, Mosher Smith, Mosher Smith, Mosher Smith, Mosher. Sean Mosher Smith. Yes. And uh, he is uh, an artist who has worked uh, with myself, with Dream Theater, with Liquid Tension Experiment. And when I talked to him about getting involved in the working on the art, he immediately said, of course. And besides doing art for uh for music projects he's done them for spirits as well so he was the perfect person to partner with um we had certain elements from iron smoke like scully and things that we wanted to keep uh to keep the brand you know uh really intact and stay true to the brand but uh but sean took it to this level where you know he just created beautiful beautiful art for the label and uh, we're very grateful to, to him for that um, with Rock the Barrel 2, we talked about doing something that meant two. So he had the idea. Or maybe you did, Tommy. Actually, it was you for the snake eyes, right? 
oh, the yeah, dice. Right. Yeah, yeah. And the snake, right? So we so we incorporated that. Um, of course, I signed every barrel, which took a long time, but it was. Uh, I think it's worth it. Yeah, that was and, actually uh, John. That was a follow up question. Um, yeah. So everyone who got rock the barrel one and two, each one is hand signed. Yeah. By you. Yes. Um, and I, I think I think you mentioned it on the first um, go around, but can you talk about the the process of signing? Absolutely. Each label. Yes, and before I do, again, guys, whiskey up, cheers, prost, nostrovia, kampai. So um, I don't know if, the, if, if any of you guys uh, know Maddie, my guitar tech. Um, he's been with me for like 20 years. And sometimes he, he takes on other jobs that he uh, previously could have never sort of imagined. So when I had the, the uh, task of signing the bourbon labels, I had Maddie come up with a contraption so that I was able to do it. So bourbon labels come in, in a roll. Uh, so picture, what is it, Tommy? Rolls of 500 labels, maybe? Drew's at 500? 750 on that one. Okay, 750. So picture like a roll with the labels or stickers on it, okay? So you can't... Now, this has to eventually go through a machine that's going to wrap the barrel. So you can't damage the stickers. You can't damage the edges of the paper or whatever. So Maddie... There's a and you guys got it just perfect, so that's tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he devised a spool sort of method where we had it on a roll. He improvised something. We stretched it across, like, picture of the old... Uh, for those of you guys who were old enough, who when we used to load cameras with film, and you had to stretch <laughs> the film across onto the next roll, uh, we did that, and then we'd, we'd roll it on the other end. I'd sign, you know, maybe five of them let them dry and roll it. So it took freaking forever because we, we didn't want them to smudge. And uh, yeah, so we signed, I think on this run, we signed a thousand of them. Uh, how many bottles did this, this second Rock the Barrel uh, yield, Tommy? I can't remember. You remember? I think it was a little over 800. Yeah. 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 So... Yeah. So that was fun signing all those labels. So everybody gets a hand signed labels. And I want to thank everybody again um, for joining us tonight and, and everybody who purchased a bottle or two or whatever you did. Uh, I think we're, we're all in a position where we get to enjoy something really special. And th these are limited. Um, they're not part of the uh, Iron Smoke line, at least not yet. Right, Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, 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 <laughs> another, another discussion but you know yeah. so so to get your hands on it is really a privilege privilege because once that um barrel blend goes it's gone uh and that's the beauty of what drew does is the way he nails it you know so expertly every time Thanks, um, Sean. So this, this is actually a cool question. Uh, Brian Chester asks, so musicians have techs. Do distillers have techs? And what do they do? So I guess, Drew and Tommy, this is for you. Um, you know, how many people are involved in the process, um, you know, in sort of making, uh, making this delicious juice? I mean, I, I have two assistant distillers right now. They basically do the equivalent of what you're doing with John, you know, so yeah, it's basically the same type of thing, you know. But they basically they'll prepare the, uh, they'll grind the grain, get it ready for the mash sun, cook the mash, uh, pump the fermenters into the stills, you know, all, all the all the good stuff. So, yeah, it's it's also for those of you who uh, have have never been to a distillery, uh, the smell when you walk in is just a, an incredible smell. Um, it's just, I can't explain it. it. It smells like baking bread or something. There's something about it. That's really, that's really amazing. unique. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. And your clothes smell like it too. Oh, yeah, I'm dude, sure. Yeah. It's like you go, it's a certain smell that sticks to you. Well, yeah. dude, I have a funny story for you guys. Me and Larry, we got pulled over one morning on the way to work 
And we literally got field sobriety tested because our clothes still reeked like alcohol from working. The oh, facility. no. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's really funny. Oh, man. That's really um, funny. Tommy, a question for you. Um, the the um, smoked flavor and obviously all of the Iron Smoke line is important. Can you talk a little bit about how your love of um, barbecue sort of tied into your bigger vision of iron smoke it was it was a weird like i had i thought of the concept and the name and everything just came like within like 45 minutes and my wow. friend, steve brown i've known for a long time and he just jumped right in and now he's got a scully tattoo oh uh, really that's yeah, great it, it just it was one of those things where it's like a eureka moment that i knew it was weird because i knew it was going to change my life that I don't know why I remember the, what the sky looked like and everything else. It just, you know, and there's a lot of different elements to it, but I, when we, I thought of it, um, Steve was like, is there a lot of, if there's not a lot of competition, I'll, I'd love to, you know, pay for the first batch or whatever. And at that moment, it was just like a concept and um, Balcones and Corsair had smoked bourbons. I don't know if you've heard of them, but there's Midwest, and they were really heavily smoked. So yeah. I wanted to figure out a way not to die, over smoke it so it just doesn't linger on and on. And then I went to work. Um, I went to this one distiller and he said, there, hey, there's somebody up the, up the lake up the lake that has a still. And I walked in. I remember the first day I met Drew, man. And, and, and uh, it was in, like we worked together and we worked together well. And now he's like my brother, you know. It's like it's amazing. Really cool, cool. Yeah, it's really Actually, cool. Uh I have a question kind of based off that. So like I I've, I've had, you know, peated scotches and that's that has that smoky sort of flavor is is it a similar type of process or is that totally something different? We do the same exact type of process, John. The thing is is that peat moss really sucks in the smoke. So we yeah. went through when we did we smoked corn, wheat, barley and rye. Barley really sucked it in, the corn sucked it in a lot. Rye took it in quite a bit, but the wheat just took in enough smoke that made it subtle. That yeah, it was something that nobody else has ever done before. So, yeah, that's amazing. So, th so that was like a, a process of experimenting. Did you guys go yeah, so I far mean, we, as I, like? Did Did you guys go so far as you know smoking those other grains and then then making a bourbon from it and tasting it or yeah we we, we yeah. smoked all of them and made bourbons out of all of them did different time intervals of how long we smoked them for and then basically yeah. found that the wheat or how long we smoke it for now is uh the it works for what we want to do so amazing that's where the art comes in though too like even with the cuts that drew does with it just it's really handcrafted it's we don't yeah. put anything else in that we mix in from um mpg out in Indiana. a lot of other guys do um so it's yeah it was hands-on man it was well it, you could take to honestly tommy you could taste it and you know again uh for those of you who didn't join us in the beginning um if you ever get a chance to go up to iron smoke their facility is just unbelievable and you could see the detail in their facility their tasting room the bar their concert venue i mean it's just like really done to the tilt and just so well and so classy so you know that kind of speaks for the amount of detail that goes into what you guys do you know and that's why it's so good it really is um Thank you. <laughs> so yeah. so there's been a lot of sorry there's been a lot of questions about this and i and I, I gotta ask it so john here you yeah. go yeah what's up if Rock the Barrel 2 was a dream theater song, what song would it be? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. I guess think of the most complex song that, you, that you've recorded. <laughs> if it was a dream theater song, it, 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 it might be uh, Metropolis from uh, Images and Words. That would be a good one. Yeah, yeah. that's... Yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was close to the... 93 i mean that was 92 so it was in the same zone there so i'll say metropolis by the way we i think we're hanging out for about an hour and we have about five minutes left so i'm gonna do i'm gonna do one more pour i don't know about you guys but we'll do one more one more virtual 
toast. And again, I appreciate everybody joining us tonight on a Friday night. Whether you're doing a rocks glass, a Glen Karen glass, you're doing it neat. I'm doing it neat. But I would like to say thank you guys so much. We'll do uh, a couple more questions, but one more whiskey up and cheers, everybody, for joining us tonight. Thank you guys. Cheers. It's good. So good. Tommy and Drew, so good. Unbelievable. Yeah. So um, good. Yeah. So there. Um, just to let everyone know, there there are still Rock the Barrel uh, T-shirts available in the Iron Smoke store, and um, there are still bottles available as well. Um, a, a lot of people are asking, you know, the future of Rock the Barrel. Um, they yeah. love it so much. Um, what would you? I guess this goes to Tommy, Drew, and to you, John. What would yeah. you like to see um, rock the barrel? What would be the next um, the next step in rock the barrel? And what would you like to um, do for you know whether it's a flavor profile or something different? What do you? What would you like to see down the road? I mean, I you know, there's a couple of things, Tommy. You can elaborate, and and this is sort of a wish list. But you know, right now the the first rock the barrel was was a blend of three barrels. Is that right, Drew? Three. Yep. Yeah, yeah, three. Mm -hmm. It's only available online. The second one we made a larger batch. We yielded almost you yep. know nine nine hundred bottles. I, things that I would like to see that Tommy and I have talked about, and I don't want to jump the gun, is is possibly making this a regular line uh also getting distribution outside of the u.s i know that our friends uh in europe and in other parts of the world uh have been clamoring for this so those those are some things that we talked about and of course the idea of, of somewhere down the line doing flavored bourbon like a butter bourbon would be really interesting to me but i don't you know tommy these are all this is your business this is your it's your companies it's, I can only have my wish list. <laughs> it's the C word, the collaboration word that we love, right? That's why we yeah. got into it. And that's why you'd like, it's it's the trust in each other. And I think yeah. we've got a great working relationship. We'd love to continue it and get more experimental as we go. I know that yeah. um, I, I, I speak for, for most, like all the team here, we, we, we're honored. And it's been such a great ride. It's like the whole team, Sean, um, Seth, every everybody we work with, Jake, your manager, um, yeah, your whole team. You put together a, a great team that we've. It's really been easy to work with you, and I think we've nailed the relationship on the between you and Drew, and getting really what behind underneath the hood and what you like, and and Drew and you see eye to eye. Yep. So it's like the, the sky's the limit, like you said, absolutely globally, and it, and and coming up with some great concepts that means something down the road to yeah. fans and, and you personally. I love it. I love it, Tommy. And, you know, one of the great things, again, you know, this relationship, obviously we talked about Seth putting this connection together and we're so grateful to Seth. Uh, but it, it, it's also a very organic relationship in the, in the backgrounds that we share and music and guitar. You know, it's a funny thing, you guys, when I think about, for example, Ernie Ball Music Man and uh, the guitars that are built and the artisan, uh, the craft that goes into them. And, and you know, w one of the main engineers, Drew, his name is Drew, and he designed the Majesty. And I think of this Drew doing that, you know, th there's such a parallel and there's such a feeling of, you know, connecting with other people that are into the art and have passion for what they do. And that's what makes the connection work. And so I'm so proud of this. You know, this would all be nothing if the bourbon tasted horrible. What would that mean, right? But the bourbon is absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. So again, it's, it's, a, it's a shared and a trusted faith in each other. And so I look forward to this partnership continuing uh, well into the future. And um, again, I want to thank everybody for joining us. It's a great night. My my light source is kind of going down as the evening. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting darker. I'm getting more. 
burning ball yeah. in the sky is going away. Yeah, I'm getting more and more mysterious here in New York, <laughs> but uh, you know, we're about hitting the hour mark here at, at, at eight o'clock. So I don't know if you guys want to say anything else to close us out, but I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Thank everybody for purchasing Rock the Barrel. It's really, really cool of you. Um, I hope you are enjoying it with family and friends the way it should be enjoyed. Um, and again, yeah, very cool. Love all of you. Cheers. I don't know if you guys want to add anything to that, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for your support. We all really appreciate it from our little old distillery in Fairport, New York. We thank you. Beautiful. Hey, guys. Um, thanks for the opportunity. This has been awesome. Awesome, Drew. Thank you, Tommy and Drew. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, everybody, you, for joining us. What, what a great night. Thank you so thank much, you. everybody, um, for joining us tonight. We all hope you uh, enjoyed our virtual tasting with Tommy Brunette, Drew Westcott, and John Petrucci. Whiskey up to you all, and we'll see you down the road. Take care, everyone. All right. Whiskey. Take care. Bye. Love you, Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Sounds like his boat's not starting. Oh, she's got butt.